with my personality and my lifestyle, like everything snowballs for me. So if I eat right, then I'm happy. You know, I have a better mood. And when I'm in a better mood, my relationships are better with my family, with my friends, with my boyfriend, with my dog. Welcome to the Shift Work Athlete Podcast. We connect with shift workers conquering life challenges and chasing big fitness goals. The goal of this podcast is to inspire and motivate our shift work community to stay fit and stay healthy with such a unique lifestyle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Shift Work podcast. So today I have a special guest for you. Her name is Erin Castell and you guys will be excited to know she is actually my girlfriend. So I just want to share a little bit about how Erin and I came to be. Um, We were both F45 coaches. Uh, We were tasked to take on an event that was happening at F45 and we just really hit it off. Um, The connection was electric. We had the same common interest and we really enjoyed um, the same things when it came down to our health and fitness. Um, We signed up for a race together and basically ever since we you know came up with different ideas to uh work out we just basically hung out all the time and we have literally been on each other's hip ever since and i couldn't be more happy i couldn't be more in love and blessed to have um somebody that can meet me on my level of energy so now that I have made her blush a little bit, Erin, please uh, introduce yourself. <laughs> All right. I am Erin, Spencer's girlfriend. I'm 23 now, and I have been living in Hamilton for the past four years. I met Spencer in 2018. I guess it was 2018 when we met, huh? Mm-hmm. And I will say that he had a huge part in me starting this crazy athletic journey that we're, we've both been on for like two and a half years now. Um, so I'm an F45 coach and I am also a student paramedic. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Great introduction. Yeah. It, like I said, it's great that we both share the same energy when it comes down to the crazy fitness world that we both um how do I say this? I don't want to say kill ourselves in, but uh, make us feel alive in because, you know, the way that we train is is not on the same level as a lot of other people. Um, and it's like I said, it's great to share that with you. So let's just um, let, let's get right into you becoming a paramedic or was this something that you wanted to do for a long time? Why, why paramedic? It just kind of came about, I think when I was in grade 12, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, like most people. And I went into general science and then health science. But like I knew I wanted to do something in the healthcare industry, but I didn't know what. And it took me a really, really long time to figure it out. I tried a lot of different things, didn't really, nothing in university really stuck with me. And my overall experience, oh, I, in university, health science. So I did a lot of kin. I did a lot of general science stuff. I graduated with a bachelor of science. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of like dabbled in everything, chemistry, biology, physics, math, like kinesiology, pretty much like every single discipline thinking Mm -hmm. that I would find something that I was attracted to. Mm -hmm. But university is a lot of like by the book stuff. Right. And then I didn't actually realize I wanted to go and become a paramedic until I joined my emergency response team on campus. Okay. So with that, there was like real world responding. And I just found that so fun. I'm a very like hands-on type A personality. I know we were talking Mm -hmm. earlier about like the type A personality characteristics, but Mm -hmm. I think it fits my personality really well. And I love the quick thinking, hands-on aspect of of that. So awesome. Yeah, like hopefully I enjoy it. <laughs> awesome. What was yeah. the aha moment for you when you started at uh Eford, right? You, I think that's what it's called. Um yeah. what was the aha moment for you? Like when you were working there, obviously 
when you first started, it was just kind of like, oh, this is cool. This is volunteering. I get to, uh, you know, experiencing something new, it, you know, might have been the community, et cetera. What was that moment for you uh, that was like, huh, I could actually see myself doing this as a career? Yeah, I think the fact that I was good at it. Like, I know that sounds silly, but I think as young adults, we're just trying to find our way in the world and try and find something that we not only love, but that we're good at. Like, for example, I'm not book smart. So university and me didn't like we mm -hmm. kind of clashed. Like I didn't do great in school. And I went from, you know, getting A's in grade 12 to then being thrown into university in first year and like right. struggling, really, mm -hmm. really struggling. And I think a lot of people Absolutely. can relate to that. I know specifically like the sciences are like pretty challenging. And so anyway, when I joined the team, I found that sense of like community and I learned a lot and I was, I was good at it. And I think when you're good at something, you also start to like it. Like, I don't know, like with, with any sort of hobby, it's a struggle at first and then you learn and you learn and then it gets easy. And then you just latch on and you're like, wow, I actually, awesome. I love this. And I can see myself doing it That's for a good. long time. Um, so. And you got a bit of like, you got a bit of a taste when it came down to shift work doing that as well. Can you share a bit about that with us as well? Yeah. So, <laughs> so it was, it was hard because we were full-time students and then we were also um, juggling. I think it was, I think it was like eight to 12 shifts mm -hmm. every two weeks on effort. And those were flipping between days and nights. There was no, um, real structure to it at all. And so I would find myself being on a night shift and then sleep, like trying to get little broken naps in all night, but then getting woken up at 3am and 4am, wow. 5am. And then my first class would be at 8am. So I was up all night and then studying and being a full-time student. And I totally crashed and burned. I did not have a good experience with night shift at all on effort. And it actually led to me um, quitting the team in my last year, which obviously you were around for that. And it was very emotional because effort was a huge part of my life. A lot of my friends were on the team. Um, and so having to take a step back from that for my own mental health, was really hard. Um, are, yeah. So I did not have a great experience with night right. shift doing that. Are you that. open to share with us some of the um, mental health issues you might have experienced with doing the shift work, e for being a full-time student? Yeah. Well, I have a very, um, like a say yes personality, which I feel like a lot of people have where they get asked to do something and they just feel like they have to say yes. And being like the captain of sports teams and getting straight A's, like that was my entire life growing up. So I, I juggled all of that. Um, but when I got to university and I started struggling through school, everything else just added on and added on and added on. And... <sighs> I was actually asked to be the director of effort in my final year. And I think that was kind of the moment when I realized that like, I can't handle everything. I'm not a superhuman mm -hmm, <laughs> as much right. as I want to be. Mm -hmm. um, and again, like that goes with my personality where I just, I feel like I should be able to do everything. Right. Um, Especially being a student too, right? You, you yeah. You want to get your yeah. foundation built. I think we we all want to like do our best and be involved and be a leader and all that. But when you pile too much on, it's almost like you've got your pizza and you're giving away slices and you only have so many slices you can give away. Like you, right. you yeah, can't give you, more. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I got mm. to my final piece of pizza. And I was like, you know, giving away my, my sanity and my livelihood and my sleep and my friends, like I gave it all up. Mm -hmm. Um, and that just led to me not having a happy life. Like not, I wasn't enjoying myself at all. So yeah, 
I think that was kind of what happened with all of that. So. Yeah, it's definitely challenging. And, you know, thank you for sharing that because, um, yeah, in life, it's easy to become very spread thin. And like you said, giving away a pizza slice here, pizza slice there. And then you come to realize that you have none for you. And that's basically um, the point where like now you're hungry and you're exhausted. You don't have any fuel. You're not getting anything to, you know, feed your own um, livelihood because you've just kind of given everything away. And don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with giving and helping and contributing, but you also have to find those times in your life where, you know, you could take that step back, which you did to, you know, make sure that you're getting the proper food that you need or proper sleep and putting the time and effort to focus on your studies and make sure that you have your pillars all balance. And I'm going to say this a lot in this podcast because I believe in having strong pillars and they're, they're, you know, the foundation to the basically the foundation to the roof. If one of your pillars are unstable, then the roof is going to be unstable. And that means anything that's falling on top of that roof is going to make it really hard for you to support yourself, right? So it's great that you came to that realization to take that step back and start to focus on strengthening up those pillars again. And yeah, I was there for it. I seen, I, I got to see what you were going through. And, uh, you know, I want to say that thank you for taking my advice and letting me support you to make sure that you're making the proper choices to make sure that your pillars are nice and strong. And it's great now because I think, you know, with that last year, you're able to focus on completing the task at hand. And now it gave you the realization that, you know what, I miss being an efer. I really enjoyed that kind of atmosphere. And I would love to see it as a career, which has led you up to now being in school. So can you share a bit a bit about going through um, paramedic school? Yeah, well, I started school. Um, at pretty much right when I graduated university. So I graduated university and then I threw myself right back into school and I started right when the pandemic hit. So my entire first semester was online. So I was basically sitting in front of a, a computer learning everything there was to know about being a paramedic, which as you can imagine is it's difficult because being a paramedic, it's very hands-on and like people driven, a lot of communication skills. And so it was pretty hard, especially even just for myself, like being stuck in a room on a laptop, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to with Mm. like jobs shifting to being online in your house. And I struggled being at home all day, every day on the computer and then going to bed and restarting. Like it was, it was tough. Um, Okay, then, so when the pen, when, yeah. the, when things started to open back up and you had to start going in, let's 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 aim this more towards near the end of your uh, semester, um, okay. or let's even get into you starting your ride outs. Okay, so you, school is done, um, you got the hands on experience and stuff like that, and now you've been tasked to get into your ride outs. And how long were those ride outs? So I had four hundred hours of placement that I had to do on the road. And that equaled out to be about three months. So I, I just finished on Saturday, actually. Woo, congratulations. And thank you. I'm sad it's over. I wish I could just keep on going. We were joking, <laughs> like if I could secretly just keep riding along with my, yeah, with my preceptor and no one would notice. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but, but, I would notice, you'd be gone. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I will say that going from school to the placement is completely different. Like you're just thrown into the deep end. Mm -hmm. There's so much about the job that you, you can't learn in school. And I think that goes with a lot of the, um, healthcare professions, like nursing, I can think of like, that would be probably very different going from school to your placement. But yeah, there, there's a lot that I learned that we weren't taught in school. And I think it comes with life experience. And it's funny, I feel like I just started getting the hang of things. And then my placement was done, like 400 mm. hours, boom, it took me 400 hours to kind of start getting my bearings. And then before I knew it, it's over. Right. So yeah. Um, 
so talk a bit about your shifts. What were they like? Okay, so I started out on a continental shift schedule, which is two days on, three days off, three days on, two days off. Mm -hmm. And I was doing only days. So I was one of the lucky ones and got put on a strictly day shift. Mm -hmm. I found um, scheduling training with day shifts to be pretty difficult. But again, my my sleep schedule was great because I didn't have the flip-flopping between nights. So I was living the dream. And then about, I'd say for my last month, I switched over to a um, days and nights rotation where I would do <laughs> four days on, five days off, five days mm -hmm. on, four days off. And I would do day, day, night, night. So I basically had like 24 hours to flip into nights, which was, it was a shock to the system. Like they don't yeah. tell you what nights is going to do to you until mm -hmm. you do it. You really just, you have no idea. So what are so. some of those things that you experienced with um, finally getting a taste of what night shift's all about? Well, night shift just, it, it's not natural to the body. And for me as a student who's like just going into it for the first time, a lot of people have a lot of opinions on what you should do and stuff. So, you know, like uh, my preceptors, not, not to say anything, but, but a lot of people, they were drinking caffeine all night or they were eating all night, or they were telling me, you know, how to sleep, when to sleep. And I'm lucky because I lived with you already. So I already had an idea of how I wanted to approach nights, but I had my friends messaging me being like, Aaron, how the heck are you working out and doing nights? How, how are you meal prepping? How are you doing this stuff? Like, I just cannot figure out how to do it. And it's because we're never taught. Like we have, we weren't taught in school how to approach nights or how to deal with like the sleep deprivation. So yeah, that was, that was, I think that was the most challenging part was just figuring out what works for me and not what works for somebody else who's doing nights. If that makes right. Sense. Um, so I guess you could kind of say that the fact that you kind of went into your night with a routine or some sort of plan helped you. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And plans change. Like there were, there were nights when I was, totally fine and had no hunger cravings. And then there were nights when I had hunger cravings and not every single night is going to be the same, mm. but I think establishing a routine or something that works for you, having healthy options even, or having those ideas for, of what to do when those hunger cravings arise, if they do arise is way better than not being prepared. Mm. And then stopping at McDonald's at 3 a.m. and getting a <laughs> a score McFlurry because oh, you're geez. you feel like you're starving, you know? Right. Yeah. So, so what are what are some things that like helped you stay committed to your nutrition and like how did you avoid the temptations? So I will say that having somebody that you're living with that's kind of on the same page as you is really helpful. Um, because you like, you're not surrounded by the bad influences. Like for me, if there's like a chocolates and cookies everywhere, like I'll right. eat them, mm -hmm. you know? So, mm -hmm. so kind of being on that same level or understanding with the people around you is super helpful. Um, another thing for me, like our main room in the paramedic station was filled with treats always. So I would just Oof. leave and I would go and I would sit outside or I would go and sit in the ambulance if I had those cravings. Cause right. if I'm sitting at the community table with all the paramedics mm -hmm. and there's cookies like right in front of me and everyone else is eating cookies, like it's obviously your name, eh? you're going to want to eat them. <laughs> like it, and then people are like, oh, come on, Aaron, just have one cookie. Like, yeah. And then you start thinking to yourself, you know, the little devil on your shoulders, like, yeah, Aaron, just one cookie. Like, it's not going to kill cookie. you. You're like, right. it's so easy to give in. It's so mm. easy. And it's then, so hard to have more than one, right? Yeah. Like, because 
I have an all or none mentality. So like I'm, I'm good, good, good. And then if I have one cookie, then it's like game over, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, other helpful things, just having your meals prepped for me is huge. Having a game plan. And then for me having a training plan, which is our half Ironman that we're doing. Um, because I want to feel race ready. And in order for me to feel race ready, I want to fuel my body with what I need Mm. and, you know, not screw myself over. Like not like you're not going to ever screw yourself over with one bad night. Um, which I think is also important to say, but one bad night for me can easily turn into a bad week. So I think recognizing that and then having like the, the steps in place to kind of get back on track. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's, that's great advice. So that's definitely very important to, like I said, have, have a routine or sorry, like you just said, having a routine and proper steps in place to make sure that you are prepared for whatever goal or task it might be. And then also just performing at peak performance throughout your night on your job. Right. Okay. So Mm -hmm. you're talking about peak performance here. Let's, uh, can you share a little bit about what, what big goal do you have planned for yourself right now? So, uh, well, we're doing the half Ironman in August, which is in mm. like five weeks, which blows my mind how quickly five it's come. Weeks. Woo, can't wait. But yeah, so that's the goal is to just do what I can do and just, you know, go in with no expectations, but I want to perform at my best. And then the secret goal is like, ultimately, I want to win my my age group, right? Awesome. Awesome. So, how, are, how are you planning for this? Like, what uh, what are you doing to make sure, like, I know what we're doing, obviously, but I want you, I want to hear from your point of view. Uh, what are you doing to plan for it? And, and how was planning for your training through your shifts? How was, was that difficult? Like, how, how are you establishing everything to make sure that you are going to win that age group. I will say that being that incorporating our training plan into the busy full-time shift schedule is sometimes really overwhelming because Mm -hmm. some days, like for example, I would plan for me to do a run after a 12 hour shift Mm. And then I would come home from my 12 hour shift and feel completely exhausted, which is a hundred percent fair because I've just been working on my feet for 12 hours. Right, right. But then because I had that run scheduled in, there's this sense of guilt, like, oh, I should do this because if I don't do it today, then I'll, I'll have to miss it for the week. Right. And So I think the most important thing for myself was starting to become okay with missing a day, which you live with me. So you know that I'm stubborn and I hate changing the plans and I hate missing days. I will do whatever it takes to get it done. Mm -hmm. And that's good though. There's nothing wrong with that. Honestly, it's good to have that drive and motivation and discipline because at the end of the day, a lot of people do not have that discipline to stay consistent with something. Right. So, you know what? It's, it's okay. But like you said, it's, it's, it's finding that balance. And now that you've came to realization that, you know what you, there is, coming home after a shift you don't necessarily have all the energy like you would as if you were off all day yeah well it's so funny because there's just pros and cons to like every form of motivation like if you have no motivation you feel like you should have motivation and then when i have too much then i completely overwhelm myself and dig myself into a hole of like fatigue and sleep deprivation. And so, you know, either way, it's, it's not great. So it's so important to find that middle ground. And that's, I think was my biggest struggle with the shift work and stuff, um, was being okay, having a rest day and being okay. If the plans had to change and, 
again, with my all or none mentality, if I miss today, you don't need to, you know, throw it all down the toilet and say, you know, screw it, whatever (laughs) for the rest of the week, just Mm -hmm. say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to do this. Right. Or even shortening things too. Right. Like I don't need to do this one hour workout. I can shorten it to 30 minutes and that's still great. Right. No, that's good. That's awesome. Uh, that's a great mindset that you have built for yourself. And, you know, it's great to watch you um, go through all the, you know, ups and downs of training. Like, obviously, I've been training for a much longer time when it came, comes down to coaches and different styles of, of um, sp- or different sports in general. And uh, it's nice to see that you finally have found a balance for yourself instead of mentally and physically abusing yourself to the point, like you said, where there's fatigue. And yeah, because it, it gets it gets harder at that point if you you know get an injury or you're just super burnt out and you lose the uh fun of why we're doing this and uh yeah no like i said it's great to see that you've you found a healthy point of view with it Aaron, let's get into some of our final questions so what is one piece of advice you can give our listeners when it comes down to you know training becoming a paramedic or just doing, um, a job that you work shifts? Um, I think definitely if you don't know what you're doing, don't be afraid to ask and talk to the people around you about what they do. Like if you see someone that looks like they know what they're doing and you know, they've got the training down or they're a parent and they seem to have a good balance, I would say reach out and ask them because I feel like we all feel like alone. Like we've kind of got to figure it out on our own. And I'm lucky because I had Spencer, but I say to my friends, like if I didn't live with a shift worker, I would have had no idea what was going on. So yeah, do your research, try different things out. I would say, like for me, I tried a lot of different things out food wise before I kind of found the one thing that worked for me. And yeah, just try and like prioritize the things that are important to you. Because yeah, with shift work, you you don't really have a lot of extra free time. And like I deleted my social media <laughs> cause I'm crazy, but I, that, that's one thing that Spencer was like, I was on my phone a lot and I was just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And that was just something that was taking up a lot of my time that didn't need to. So that's just one example of something. But if it's like, maybe you just watch a lot of TV or you find yourself doing things that don't really give you meaning and you want to prioritize that somewhere else. The one thing that really bugs me, like as a personal trainer is when people are like, Oh, I don't have time. And I get it. Like people are really busy, but there's always time to prioritize the things that are most important to you. It's just about how you kind of shift around your, your schedule. Mm -hmm. So like just always believing that you have time to do what's important and it might mean sacrificing other things, but you can always find a way to, to reach your goals and kind of find the time for things that are important to you. Awesome. Um, exactly. Like definitely make your health a priority and, and not sacrifice it is, is definitely so important. Um, do you have any practices or tools that you use to help reduce stress or give you mental clarity? Um, yes, I am a schedule freak, maybe too much. So, but like I plan my week and again, that goes with the finding or making time for things that are important. Hmm. Um, I get it. Schedules can change and stuff, but if I know what's coming in the week, I can make sure that I have time for everything that's important. So instead of trying to like, obviously work is work and you can't really change that around, but I schedule in my training as though it's work. 
like I schedule in and I say, you know, this one hour or this one and a half hours or this 30 minutes, you know, this is getting done. Like I Mm. have to do it. And I mean, (laughs) I know we talked earlier about how technically it doesn't have to get done, but that's the way I view it is Mm. it's a job. And if I want this result, whether it be weight loss or a certain time goal in a race or even just to feel better, like you have to make it a priority as though it's work. Mm. Um, Nice. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. I, I agree. Like I'm a little bit different. Like I've been working my job now for over two and a half years, almost three years. And I kind of know what my routine is where I don't need to write it down. And if it doesn't work out, it's, it's okay. Um, and like I said, it comes back to you being disciplined and committed to it. And, you know, if that gives you a sense of reduced stress or mental clarity, like keep doing what works best for you, um, which is awesome. Um, I do see that you like to do a lot of yoga. Is that, is that also part of that mental clarity or de-stressor? Do you like, why, why do you love yoga so much? I'm just, I'm just curious. I, I go through waves with yoga where I'll do it like every single day for a month and then I'll fall. Like I, I just won't do it for a couple of weeks and then I'll get back on it. Mm. For me, I do it to stretch because here's another thing I learned. I went from being a personal trainer and running around and training like all day, every day to sitting for 12 hours. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. Like, because people don't realize being a paramedic, like a lot of your job is sitting in an ambulance and just kind of like driving around or sitting at the base and stuff. Right. And I'm like a very antsy person. So I'd have to get up and like walk around and people would think I was insane, but I started noticing I was getting like a tight back and I was getting really stiff. And this happened Mm. within a matter of like one block of shifts. Like I was already tight. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it because I know people say, you know, sitting is horrible, blah, blah, blah. And I, but I never new form of, of smoking supposedly. Yeah. Well, I was just like, Oh yeah. Yeah. But I had never been in that situation. And then now like I understand fully. And so I started having to make yoga a priority as well because right. I was so stiff that I wasn't able to train. Like I, I noticed a huge decline in my training as well as like just not feeling comfortable sitting. Mm. I I don't know how to explain it, but I, yeah, I had to start doing more yoga and more mobility and stretching. I do yoga more so for the stretching than for the, um, like mindfulness aspect of it. Although I think both have helped me. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. People don't realize how, uh, aggressive our jobs can be on a, especially if you do have a job where you sit a lot and that, you know, you get into the state of comfort with just sitting or not doing anything. And, you know, the mind or the body, um, or the, just the person themselves, you know, start to forget the importance of movement and why we need to move and stretch and exercise. And it's, it's very, um, sad that it's not something that isn't being forced more in jobs in general, whether you're a shift worker or you work regular nine to five job that, you know, there isn't, blocks or periods inputted in for mental and physical health. And yes, you work a physically demanding job, but there are long stretches where like you've shared with me where you're, you know, standing for X amount of time in a hospital or you're sitting in the back of the ambulance in a uncomfortable position for a long duration of time, or, you know, you might doze off and now you're in a very uncomfortable position once again with your neck, your back, et cetera. And yeah, it's, it's very unfortunate that, you know, 
people may judge you or be like, oh, you're a weirdo. Like, why don't you just sit down on a lazy boy chair and just relax or do whatever? Just like, why are you moving? Right. Um, you know, I get the same kind of um, gestures at work as well, because like I'll work out in my crane. I'll go for walks whenever um, we're on a down or I have periods of time where I don't need to be in my crane. I'll go and walk and get the blood flowing or stretch or whatever. Right. So it's great that you're making yoga a priority for your own physical uh, fitness. Uh, so that way, you know, you're preventing injury and you're decreasing any sort of stress that's going on in the body. And like you said, you know what, it does have its mental, um, clarity or, or benefits as well. And, you know, you may not realize it, but you know, when you move well, you feel good, you're going to, you know, psychologically just feel good because if you're, you know, achy or you're stiff, your, your mind, your mindset's going to be a little bit more on the moodier side. Right. So, you know, I, you know, when you're moving well, you're going to feel good. And like I said, that's, that's, that's fantastic that you've made that a priority. All right. What is something you wish you could have told yourself when you first started shift work? So let's think about like Efer and then shift work now um, becoming a paramedic. Um, with Efer, I didn't meal prep. So <laughs> that was horrible. Okay. And <laughs> this time around, I did. And to me, that made all the difference because I wasn't super hungry. Like, I, I, I think that, like, I fast on my night shifts for the most part. Like, I'll have my last meal around 9 or 10. And okay. then good. for the rest of the shift, I, I won't eat. Mm -hmm. um, but with Efert, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pack a dinner. So sometimes I'd skip dinner or I'd have like a brownie for dinner. Ooh. And then I'd, and then, you know, we'd wake up at 3 a.m., we'd come back and we'd be writing call reports and we'd just be like smashing chips like wow. at 3 a.m., just because we're yeah. starving and we're, we, mm -hmm. we're up for another hour. Whatever is easy and quick to grab, right? So if you make the healthy things easy and quick to grab versus the other easy and quick things to grab, then the only thing holding you back is your own brain because I get it. If like you don't have a healthy option and you only have an unhealthy option, then there's a lot more than just your brain. Like there's also the fact that you actually physically don't have any healthy food, but if you have the healthy food there, then you really don't have any excuse. To, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm, so absolutely. like it makes it a lot better, but I awesome. will say like, I think um, like one of the big things as a fresh student going in tonight, sh like going into shift work, the things that I see where it's so easy to get complacent, like I have like, for example, like my preceptor and stuff and, and like a lot of the other medics, like they, you start so strong, like you just start and you're motivated and you're like, I'm going to make this work for me. Like this is going to be my my job, I'm excited. I've got it all sorted out. You know, it's so easy to just find the easy way out and just start being like, Oh, it's so, you know, it's okay. If I only get four hours of sleep, like I'll make it work. Mm. It's just mm. what I have to do. Right. It, it, like, or it's fine. It, it's actually, it's actually cheaper if I eat out or, or you like, mm. you make up excuses. excuses like, yeah. Mm. So I would say like, even to you, you've been great, but I, I feel like you can also relate with what you see around your workplace where like, it's really easy to just kind of like fall in, fall into like those patterns. So if you're someone right. who's been doing shift work for a long time and you feel like you're stuck, just remember how you were when you first started and, and you can still change. Like there's no there's no point in time in your life when you can't decide to make a change. Like you, right. You know, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And and make that change for the better or just make a commitment to yourself that you're going to, to be the best version uh, possible and minimize the negative things. Right. Like, 
we all know shift work is unhealthy. Well, great. What are some things that you have control over that can, you know, keep you healthy, keep you, you know, getting 1% better every day and moving forward cuz you know at the end of the day you could you could control the things that you have control over and the things like your your job if you work a 7 p.m. to a 7 a.m. you unfortunately have no control over that so control the things that you have control over and make sure your pillars are nice and balanced and and you know have build yourself a strong structure so yeah no that's that's a great piece of advice okay the last question Aaron what drives your motivation to be the best you possibly can be my biggest motivation is to just become the best that I can be. Like if there's, I I know that's super nonspecific, but in terms of like being an athlete, I think, and then being Mm -hmm. a good person. Like, so for me, I find that, that with my personality and my lifestyle, like everything snowballs for me. So if I eat right, then I'm happy you know, I have a better mood. And when I'm in a better mood, my relationships are better with my family, with my friends, with my boyfriend, with my dog. (laughs) Can't forget dog, dog. Can't, Can't forget dog, dog. And then when I have good relationships around me, you know, the entire energy that I'm surrounding myself with is more positive. My training is better. My sleeping gets better. My you know, I'm more motivated to train. I'm more motivated to stretch, which, (laughs) you know, stretching is one of those things where I, I rarely have motivation to stretch, but if I'm, if I'm just snowballing, like one little thing at a time, one little thing at a time, one little thing at a time, it builds, it builds and builds and builds until you create the life that you want to live. Like if you had, if we had done this podcast two years ago, like I was in a dark, like I was in a, I was in a hole when we first met. And you were a little bit of that positivity and then starting to work at the gym was a little bit of that positivity and moving out on my own was positive. And then, you know, you're welcome. Yeah. And, and, you know, (laughs) signing up for my first race, which led me to running Mm. it like just, there's all of these little things that seem little at the time but you're just creating the building blocks for, for how you want to live. And Mm -hmm. yeah, like, so it's, it seems overwhelming when, when I look back, I would have never thought that I would be where I am now, but it was like one tiny little step at a time that gets you to where you want to be. I know that that's what motivates me is just seeing how, how great I can be and how much positivity I can you know, have in my life and world. give to mm. other people too. So no, it's a great way to look at it. Like you said, how you feel translate into how you represent or, or, or emit that energy to the people in your life, your family, uh, you and I, your, your training, the, how you feel at the gym, being a coach on the floor. And I can relate to that so much, like the days coming off a, a night shift and then having to go and train at the gym or sorry, go and teach at the gym. I wasn't a very positive person, right? Like, you know, getting good sleep and going and coach at the gym, you're a very positive person. You feel good or eating healthy. You feel good. That energy is going to radiate and other people are going to feel that. And yeah, no, that is, that was powerful. I, I really enjoyed that answer because that, that that's awesome and like you said you want to keep building that snowball and the momentum of that snowball to the point where you know you're just going to continue to focus on choosing more positive choices that you know are going to make that snowball as big as it possibly can be Right. I, it's funny how you use a snowball as your analogy and I'm not going to pick on you for it. Um, I, you know, so, you know, I, I like I said, I always fall back on the pillars or the foundation. Right. So just making sure your concrete is nice and solid and that you can continue to build those pillars on top of it or your snowball. And yeah, no, that that was a fantastic answer. I love that. And I see it like you've caught you've came so far 
um, since I first met you. But even when I first met you, I know you think you're in a dark place. I never thought you were. And, you know, the more that we got to know each other and the things you've shared with me, I think you've done a phenomenal job staying above the water and making the right choices to, you know, give or create the lifestyle that you truly want to live um, as an athlete, as a good person. And no, you're doing all the right things. And I'm really excited to see you um, continue to build that snowball and help people as a paramedic and, and really continue to give that good, healthy energy to um, the people that need it. And yeah, people are going to see what you're doing and they're going to be motivated and inspired. So keep shining, keep building that snowball. And this was a phenomenal podcast. I want to thank you for um, sitting down with me and, and sharing your world and your experience with doing the shifts and becoming a paramedic. And you know what? I think a lot of people need to hear this podcast and and get a good understanding that you know there's going to be struggles at the very beginning and as you keep making those positive choices moving forward that the the what i want to say repercussion not even repercussion the the benefits that you know choosing those right or choosing those right choices are going to benefit you in the future so Thank you, Aaron, once again for joining me. And uh, we're about to go out for dinner. So, yeah, we're doing this in the same house, but on different floors. <laughs> That's right. Yes. All right. Well, babe, I love you. Thank love you so you much. And uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say that was a very fun podcast to do with my girlfriend. Um, it wasn't hard to convince her to jump on and do the podcast with me. She's actually been very supportive towards the YouTube, towards the podcast. And I thought it would be nice for you guys to get to know her, meet her, hear a little bit about what she's doing um, with her journey to become a paramedic and the schooling that she has to go through. So thank you guys so much once again for checking out my podcast and listening to Aaron and I talk. Um, yeah, she's, she was great. She killed it. And I couldn't be more grateful to have her in my life supporting me with this journey. If you guys enjoyed this podcast, please leave a review or please follow, subscribe wherever you are listening to this. You can find this podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and there's other platforms out there. That's about it from me, guys. Thank you so much again. I catch you in the next one. Peace.